Amazon's Kindle Fire is putting a tablet in the hands of a lot of folks who couldn't justify Apple's five to eight hundred dollar price tag. And the main play on the Kindle is simpler as well. It's all about media, audio, video, web, ebooks. But what if the media you want isn't on your Kindle Fire? It's on your PC. There's a way to get it there with a remote desktop app. I'm Brian Cooley here to show you how to use your Kindle Fire to access stuff on your computer remotely. For this project, you'll need, of course, a Kindle Fire and a PC, either Windows or Mac, and it needs to be connected online. There needs to be Wi-Fi access for your Kindle Fire because that's the only kind it understands, and we'll need a remote desktop app installed both on the Kindle and also on the desktop. There are a handful of remote apps available in the Kindle Fire's curated Android App Store. We're going to use Splashtop as an example. It does cost three bucks, while some others are free, but I've had good results with Splashtop, and it has a high number of enthusiastic user reviews. First, go to the Apps tab on the Kindle Fire and search for Remote Desktop in the Store area. You'll see all your choices there, about eight of them. Click on Splashtop Remote, and then authorize the purchase and install it. Now, go to your computer and install the free desktop component, which is called the Splashtop Streamer. You can find that at splashtop.com slash streamer. Install that and create an access code custom to you, which you will also enter on your Kindle Fire to authorize these two to talk to each other. Now, there are two ways to connect them. One is when you're on the same LAN or local network. That would be like when you're home, for example. And then it's easy. You just go to your Kindle and you hit the plus sign to add a computer and then type in the IP or internet address on your home network of the computer you want to access. Now, over the internet, it's a little more tricky, but luckily, you can use Splashtop's Finder, which is very helpful. What you do is you log in on both the computer and the Kindle Fire with your Google account, and Splashtop will be able to put the two together and automatically find them over the internet. It's a nice tool that keeps you out of the morass of network address translation and port forwarding and all kinds of nasty stuff. Now you can see and hear what's on your PC or Mac on your Kindle Fire live from anywhere. You can play a video or listen to audio, your music collection. And I find the audio and video sync is pretty good as long as your Wi-Fi connection on the Kindle is good and solid. Fitting. Brian Cooley is the editor at large for CNET.com. You hear about uh, price increases, Brian, you think uh, bad for the consumer, obviously. And Note that you're going to want to brush up on the gestures here on the Kindle Fire to operate the touchscreen to replicate mouse actions you would use on your computer. And to remind yourself of those, there's a quick pop-up reminder card right down here at the bottom of the screen, because not all of them are intuitive. And remember, on the Kindle Fire, you can pinch and zoom like any other Android device to get to little fiddly stuff on the computer, like those little check boxes for closing a window. Those can be really hard to hit unless you make them bigger. Oh, and a quick way to resize the screen on the Kindle to scale the display is just to snap the rotation once, from portrait back to landscape. Oh, and the keyboard, that's right over here on the right, whenever you want to get to it. So that's an easy way to get everything from your computer to work on your Kindle Fire in terms of media that you thought you had to physically move or translate through the clouds somehow. I'm Brian Cooley. Thanks for watching this how-to.